Hello, viewer. Welcome to Hope Sabbath School. I believe you are doing wonderful. I believe the good Lord is continuing leading you. Even though we're going through trials and difficult moments, we are in the crucible of Christ. That is what keeps us going. That is what keeps us hopeful. And so we are here once again to review this week's lesson, lesson five, with an interesting um, caption, extreme heat. Last week we discussed a very important lesson, seeing the goldsmith's face. We discussed the rule of suffering in our purifying process. And we, we underscored or we understood that suffering plays a role in God's desire or attempt in purifying us so that he, his, his character, his image will be reflected in us. And so like Job, we must have the understanding that when we have come out of our trials and our difficult moments, we shall come forth as pure gold. We continue with our um, series for this quarter with the caption in the crucible of Christ. Today's lesson is, this week's lesson is lesson five, extreme heat. And once again, I am reviewing the lesson with Diamond Field Ghana Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And they are represented by um, elders, Elder Archibald Kojo Nyanzu from Mespa SDA Church, Asamankese. Pastor Nyan Elder Nyanzu, you are welcome. Thank you very much. All right. Um, the name of your church is interesting, Mespa. Yes. That's the greetings of Adventists. And I've been telling my church members, uh, many times when we say Mespa, then people close their eyes mm -hmm. and tell God, that, but you do not depart with God. You are departing, you are one, departing one from another. So Mespa is a greeting mm -hmm. that you hold someone's hand and tell the person. All right, so that is just by the way. And then we also have with us Elder Edward Kwanadu from Glorious King SDA Church, also at Asaman Kese. Elder Kwanadu, welcome. Thank you very much. I hope Glorious Ken SDA Church is doing fine. Sure. We thank God and God bless you for making time Amen. to share your thoughts with our viewers. And I also have my regular panelists and co-hosts, Pastor Michael Kwamina Loas, Ashama New Life District Pastor, and Pastor is greeting all of you and says that um, God is leading his people and even as we are here. So we welcome all of you and our cherished viewer, cherished viewers, um, we are glad that you are joining us. Kindly share your thoughts with us. Leave your comments on our Facebook page, Hope TV or Hope Sabbath School. You will find us there and share your thoughts with us. We will also respond and share ours with you. So beloved, without wasting much time, um, we shall pray with Pastor Konadu as we commence our discussion. Elder Konadu. Elder Konadu. <laughs> shall we pray? All right. Almighty Father, we are very grateful and thankful today for another week. As we sit to digest your word, we ask of you to be with us Open our minds, open our hearts, open the minds and hearts of our viewers. So all what you are going to discuss will be a blessing to us and to them also. Continue to be with us throughout this program. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 So we begin with our memory text, which is found in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10, from the New King James Version. We read, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. 
When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Amen. Amen. Pastor Nyanzu, Elder Nyanzu, today I don't know why <laughs> I'm saying pastor okay, left, right, and center. Yes. Um, so, Elder Nyanzu, who is in extreme heat here? as far as this uh, memory text is concerned. Interesting. Here we see the maker himself, Jesus Christ, um, also in the crucible. Wow. And um, looking at what the prophet Isaiah is saying about him, mm. his heat and the kind of experience he's going through in the crucible is far beyond what any human can ever go through. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you for that. Ada Konadi. Yeah, what makes it interesting is that it looks as if he was put in the crucible by his father. Mm. It says, yes. yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Okay. So it looks as if it is intentional for God to put him in that very tight corner mm. for a purpose. Yeah, so uh, to, to, to add to it, mm -hmm. I want to go to John 3.17. Okay. And see the end of it. It mm. says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn yeah, the world, but that the world through him might, might be, saved. be saved. So it means God purposely put Christ in the crucible for a purpose, mm. for a special purpose. So at the end of the day, someone somewhere will benefit All from right. the suffering he's going through. All right. So we find Jesus, the maker himself, in extreme heat. Pazaloas. Yes, yeah, so you see the prophet saying that as an uh, elder ended it, um, God did not, let me put it in a, a little different way from where he, what he did, um, did not intentionally subject Jesus to go through the crucible in that way, but he allowed him so that we will be saved. That's why he says that when you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. And he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord mm. shall prosper in his hands. The pleasure of the Lord is to see the sinner being saved. And to save the sinner, then he has to remove every covering so that he comes to the earth. And whatever he goes through, he cannot intervene. He has to allow Jesus to go through. But he did not put Jesus in there to come and then suffer mm. so that the sinner will be saved. Mm. But he allowed Jesus to go through. And so the, uh, the main important thing I find from this memory test is that he is going to prolong our days. He is going to save us. He is going to work on our salvation even though he suffered. It's not free. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they say they're giving you something free, remember, somebody is paying. If nobody is paying tomorrow, you go and pay for that free. Mm. And uh, you realize when COVID was uh, heated, <laughs> uh, we had free water, free life. But now you can see that we're all going through the heat together. So exactly the same way that Jesus paid that we will be saved. So no matter what happens and you go through the crucibles, always remember that he, you shall prosper in the hand of God. Mm. God will never leave you alone. He will still be with you. Even though you may, see, you may see him to be silent, he may seem to be silent, but he's right he's there, there with you. He's so there. let's trust him. Mm. and let's walk in the crucibles with him. And I know the characters we're going to look at mm. this week will help us to understand that he, we are not alone in it. I see. I see. And the uh, one key thing about Jesus himself in the crucible is that, you know, you consider previous lessons, we have learned that um, we are going through such experiences because we need to be purified. Mm. But for Jesus, there's no impurity in him to be purified. Mm -hmm. And so his becomes extraordinary yes for the sake of the love he quite has unfair us. right yes. yes if we are to put it yes, that, that way that is it but for for our sake for our salvation sake he had to endure all these things so all right he can be saved that's true so i remember the opening or the introduction to the quarter study by the author the writer he made a statement the cru the creator crucified the Creator crucified, and that's what we are, we are reading here. Yeah, but Pastor, this is interesting. But remember, mm -hmm. Christ had to go through for purification because He was carrying our bed, born our bed, mm. so He therefore needs to go through it so that He will be cleansed 
from uh, the dross or the impurities. Yeah. And the, had it not been the two of us, then what you said is 100% correct. But mm -hmm. so long as he has decided, I have to come in to bear the sins of many, then those sins must be paid out. If right. not, Christ will not qualify <clears throat> to go through it. That's yeah. why I believe the lesson wants to put us to draw our attention to the fact that Christ had to go through the crucibles, not because of his own choice of sins, but because of my sin and because of your sin. Exactly. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor. And I believe, um, is it in Isaiah chapter 6 when um, God said, Who shall I send? And who will go? And he said, Here am I, Lord, send me. So he took this upon himself willingly, yeah. willingly. So um, we know the famous Christian writer C.S. Lewis. His wife was dying. And as his wife was dying, Lewis, Lewis wrote, not that I am in much danger of ceasing to believe in God. The real danger is of coming to believe such dreadful things about him. The conclusion I dread is not, so there is no God after all. But so this is what God really like. So this, so there's no God, there's no God after all, but so this is what God is really like. like. And this is coming from no one like um, than a Christian stalwart, C.S. Lewis, right? C.S. Lewis. Um, he started as an atheist and later became, he a, wonderful became a wonderful Christian. And he says that as he watched his wife dying, um, his question or his worry is not that God does not exist, yes. but is this how God is? <laughs> <laughs> To allow my wife to die like that? So when things become really painful, some of us reject God completely. For others, like Luis, there is the temptation to change our view of God and imagine all sorts of bad things about him. The question is, just how hot can it get? Just how hot can it get? How much heat is God willing to risk putting his people through in order to bring about his ultimate purpose of shaping us into the image of his son. And so this week what we are looking at is that why do you think God is willing to risk being misunderstood by those he wants to know him and love him? And how much do you think God is willing to be misunderstood in order to mold you into the image of his son? So that's what we're going to look at. Sunday's lesson, Abraham in the crucible. Elder Nyanzu, what crucible is Abraham in? <laughs> <laughs> of course, we read this in Genesis chapter 22. Mm. It's a very wonderful chapter in the book of Genesis. And uh, Abraham, Abraham and his son mm -hmm. Isaac mm -hmm. um, went through this special experience that God has ad asked Abraham to sacrifice his only son Isaac. Okay. And they took a three days journey mm -hmm. um, with two servants in their company. But just before they got to the point where the sacrifice to be made, mm -hmm. it was just between him and the father. And Isaac asked Abraham, his father, a very interesting question. Mm. Um, that father, this is the wood and uh, the fire. But mm. where is the lamp to be sacrificed? Of course, at that moment, Abraham could not tell his son what the lamp for the sacrifice was going to be. So he, believing in God, said God would provide himself a lamp to be sacrificed. And indeed, um, when they go to the point of sacrifice, they, they would prepare the, the, the altar prepared together with, with Isaac, Abraham mm -hmm. and Isaac. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I can imagine Abraham um, breaking the news to Isaac that God has asked that you are the one to be sacrificed. And Isaac willingly allowing himself to be bound by his old father and placed on the firewood ready to be sacrificed. Then God intervenes and um, allows mm. Isaac to live. So. 
Abraham could have a view of what God himself was going to go through by giving his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, as a ransom for humanity. Mm. Thank you very much, Elder. So it was a difficult um, situation or moment for Abraham, right? That's why the lesson says, Abraham and the crucible. Elder Connady. So <coughs> why yeah. did God do this to Abraham, his, his good friend? <laughs> If I was very, very inhuman, humanly mm. unthinkable for God to do that. Okay. But you know, uh, I, I want us to pick something from here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, God may ask us to do something that he never intends for us to complete. Okay. So that is where we see how God is. Mm. Uh, he had a purpose telling Abraham to do that. But it wasn't his intention actually for Abraham to you know, slay to Isaac. actually kill so his he, son. Yes, he had a purpose. Behind the scenes, he knew what he was doing. But then, I want to believe he wanted to test the faith of Abraham. Mm. How Abraham actually loved him, his obedience. So the test here was the test of obedience. Okay. How Abraham could obey God irrespective mm. of the situation Abraham should go through. Mm. Yeah, that was the purpose. It wasn't his real intention for Abraham to slay Isaac because mm. uh, God himself, when you look at uh, the promise that Abraham was going to bear so many people, now you give me only one son. Mm. Why do you tell me to go and slay him? That means the first promise will now will not, will not will, be fulfilled. It, work. it will not come to pass. Yes, course. so actually God had a purpose. All right. Thank you. As the Lord does this make sense to you, seeing that or considering that God is an all-knowing God, and he knew the outcome of this drama? Yes. So why did he still go ahead and do it? In fact, if we didn't know the end of this story, then it may seem that God's request is much irrational. Mm. There is no sense in it. I need a child. You have promised to make my descendants huge, a multitude, and a blessing. And this is the only son I have, a promised child. And now you are asking me to go and offer that child as a sacrifice. But fortunately for us, we read in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 17, and the Bible says that, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 17, mm. and I quickly read here, by faith Abraham, when he was tested, so it means that this was a test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. So Amen. The lesson that God wanted to teach Isaac, uh, uh, Abraham, Abraham, was that someday my only begotten son will come and play this role. So I just want you to have the feeling, the euphoria mm. around it to see how it is, that it is not something that is easy. So this is a, the greatest crucible Abraham found himself mm. because he was, and imagine that <laughs> as you see your, you are there with your wife mm -hmm. and you have one, only one son mm. and then you hear a voice. Thank God that he didn't misconstrue the voice. It was indeed a true voice of God and not mm. any other voice yeah. that tells you that go and sacrifice your son. You rise up, how do you tell your wife? So let's assume when he went, he sacrificed and the boy didn't come back home. What is he going to tell Sarah? Mm. But he had to, because it is a relationship. So in this conflict, we need to build a relationship with God. That is the true import of this uh, sun, um, uh, Sunday's lesson, to mm. tell us that without building a relationship with God, we may act on impulse. We may act on our own uh, senses, yes. which will end us wrongly. But when he thinking did, that is the voice of God, the voice right. of God, but it will rather be a different voice that is not coming from God. So with this, Abraham was able to withstand the test simply mm. because he knew God's voice. So now the question remains, my dear father and mother, do you know the voice of God? When God calls, do you hear? Would you be able to respond positively? As for Abraham, he did. And that ended up in this excellent way that his own son, the one we read about in the memory test,
came down and suffered so that you and myself will have eternal life. So it is very important that we all know and take lessons from this principle. Thank you very much. The inspired and um, the inspired writer and Bible commentator Ellen G. White, in her book titled Patriarchs and Prophets, page 154, she writes this um, comment that God had, he says, God's request and its timing were not random. Indeed, it was calculated to exert the deepest possible anguish, for God had reserved his last most trying test for Abraham until the burden of years was heavy upon him and he longed for rest. It's, it's, it's amazing. And I've always been, anytime we discuss this um, story, I've always been wondering what Abraham went through during the three days journey. Even, <laughs> even <laughs> before you arrive at that destination, look at the journey you have to cover. Yes, it's like uh, from here to Kumasi. Yes. yes. Three days journey. Yes. And, and E.G. White comments that throughout the three days, Abraham kept on praying. I'm sure he, he was fasting. That God would come and change the command. It's serious. But God never spoke. And then at the end of the three days, God made it clear, this is the place I want you to offer your son. Can you imagine? So it was a great agony that Abraham went through. And God gave him, during this long distance, God intentionally did that to give him the opportunity to change his mind at any time. If, if he wanted. If he wanted. <laughs> because if after the first day, or second day, Abraham said, ah, ah, if well, I'm going to, going to sacrifice my son and I'm walking like this. Please, I cannot go ahead. He could have done that. But he knew the one he had trusted, as you guys have said. And, Let's and, go to Wayward Israel, Monday. Okay. Elder, um, yes, uh, Kwanadu, Elder Nyanzu, Nyanzu, we'll come back, okay? Um, Wayward Israel. Israel. Yes. That is another wonderful story. Mm -hmm. uh, a whole prophet whose wife becomes a harlot. <laughs> leaves the marriage, goes in for another man, mm. gives birth to you know, different kids. Mm. Then the, the, the prophet is asked to go back for your wife. Mm. Very, very strange, mm. pathetic. But I see, you know, yeah, even, this, uh, Edda, this one, even before you continue, <laughs> I, just want to, I just want to ask you, you are men here, and you are not, uh, you are African men. Uh, yes. Would, would, you, would you have done what Hosea <laughs> did? Never. Never. But you see... Uh, Knowing that the command was mm. from God. You see, <laughs> it's very serious. <laughs> it's a very serious issue we no, are not knowing. With, yeah. like, not knowing. Not knowing whether you know or not. Yes. Uh, I don't think it will ever happen. Yes, okay. I'm with you. You leave me. Go and marry another person. Mm. You give birth to about three kids. Mm. And then later on, I say, let me go back for my wife. Mm. But you see, that if, if if the men do that, then if the men do that, uh, the women accept them back. But for you, the men, yeah, <laughs> it will not happen. I understand. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I understand. Let's so go. yeah, so that shows how merciful God is. Mm. God was trying to relate Goma to Israel, and then Hosea to God Himself. Okay. Israel was God's chosen nation. The people of God. But the way the Israelites were behaving, they were always going behind God, hmm. disobeying Him, doing whatever thing they, they, they liked. But God still loved Israel and He wanted to go for them. Okay. So it shows how merciful. No, the story there, though true, is also a parable. Mm some sort of yes. a parable. An so object lesson. Exactly. For everyone for, for, to show mm. people how God, how merciful uh, our God is. Okay. So in spite of Israel's sins, in spite of our waywardness, the waywardness of man. So it's a lesson to us. No matter how far we go from God, God is still willing to bring us back. Okay. And that shows how wonderful our God is. Our God is. Uh, Adanyanzu, yes. don't you think the people insulted uh, Hosea. 
I'm sure. Oh, how and, can he do that? And rightly so. Because if you called yourself a prophet, mm. and if you knew who Goma was, then you would not get close to her. But because God commanded, he had to obey. And that because is, God had earlier commanded that even the Levite or the priest were not supposed to marry a prostitute. Exactly. They were supposed to marry only a virgin. Yes. Yeah. And this is a prophet of God. And, and um, as the, the caption for the week is reminding us, mm. um, extreme, extreme heat. heat. So to what extent will God allow us to go through the difficult times? And I, I, sometimes I want to look at it this way, that uh, we are talking about crucible. Mm. Um, sometimes the objects in the crucible, is it possible that the heat can be so mild that it can burn into ashes? But if we bring it to the Christian mm. experience, we know that God will never allow us to go through experiences that will burn us into ashes. Mm. So the interesting whatever, thing is that the, the crucible as a vessel never burns into it, ashes. Exactly. Yes. But the object could. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is in it? Yes. <laughs> well. <laughs> but but mm. we will never get there. Okay. Um, because God's plan is to ensure that um, we can receive his image that we have lost okay. so that we are prepared for eternity. All right. Thank you very much. Pastor Lawas, yes. what are some of the things that God is asking us to do that doesn't make sense? Or so, it even appears to go contrary to what he himself has said. Yeah. To make yeah. it... Uh, Looking at Hosea's issue, mm. uh, as he said, God will not allow us to be burned in a crucible because he loves us. In our lives, there are certain things that we are glued to, that we love so much, we cherish. But God would ask you to put it down. For example, sometimes we find ourselves in a sickness, a particular sickness, so that he will humble us. Mm. Sometimes we have to lose that particular job. Because if we don't lose it, we will lose our salvation. Sometimes he even needs to cut our years short. Mm. We may not understand. Those around us may not understand, but he understands that if I don't allow my son, my daughter, to sleep at this point in time, he may be out of salvation forever and ever. Mm. And so, like uh, Hosea's issue, uh, God himself is Hosea. And this is a practical thing that happened. Yeah, so. so he became a laughing stock. Yes. People laughed at him. So, <laughs> are you mad, prophet? Why would you do this? that you go and name children who are not your own, mm. and you go and sleep with this woman again as your wife, this can't be. Why would you do this? But those are the attributes we are giving to God when we continue to sin, mm. when we move wayward, when we walk with that lady who is not our wife, when we walk with that um, uh, 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 person who we know that the attitude, the behavior, the things he's doing, he's a thief, he's a robber, and we keep silent, and we continue to associate, God becomes so sad. So the lesson says that God becomes so joyful when we sit by his side. If you do what God wants and you always heed to the voice of God, God becomes so proud of you, he becomes so happy. And that is the essence of uh, Hosea's crucible, that he has to go through, the, uh, 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 through those disgraces so that it will paint a picture. And indeed, if you read through the book of uh, Judges, you realize that Israel will go wayward, worship the asteroids and worship the, the bows bows. and the others. And then God will say, okay, I take my protection. It is not that God is punishing them, but the protection that surrounds them, he takes it away. And then the enemies come on board. And when the enemies them. come then, ha, ah, okay, so it seems we are far away from God. Where is our God? Let's look for him. Mm. And this loving mm. God will open up his arms again and say, I've embraced you, come and he will come back and rescue them through the judges. Afterwards, they forget and go back. So today, with this relevant question you have asked, it is the same thing. Mm. God rescues us. But when we are free from that particular crucible that we have gone through, we, we, we forget to learn the lessons, the past lessons that refine our character. We put it down, and then we find ourselves in another one. So we need to. And right. we glue to the side of God. And when we do, God is always ready to bless us. Thank you. Thank you for that insight, Pastor. So if Goma is representing or symbolizing Israel, 
and God doesn't, God is not rejecting Israel, right? Mm -hmm. The same way is he's asking Hosea not to reject okay. Goma. Yes. Should we easily and quickly reject and ostracize people no. in our church, in no. our families? No. Give up easily and quickly on people like that? That's very important. Um, just some few days ago, I, I was having a discussion with some of my church members. Mm. They complained to me about um, somebody in the church who is, who is an elder mm. and what the person has been doing. And then I asked them, what have they done about it? They said, oh, but the other elders you know. I mm -hmm. said, no, it is not like that. If, if God has made somebody strong known to you, it is because he wants you to do something about it through yeah, you. Yes. And sometimes too, we act one or twice and we, we easily give up on people. Mm. But from this lesson, we are never supposed to give up on anybody. As long as the person is alive, yes. we need to continue to do all that we can to get, win the person back to Christ. I like that. As long as the person is alive, we have, there is hope, right? Yes. We can go to the extent mm, what we are talking about. We are a church or a people who can go to the extent of banning the publications or the books of someone, a writer, <laughs> from our shelves because that person has committed offense A or offense B. Meanwhile, what when he had not done do? that, we had nothing against his writings. We had nothing against his writings. <laughs> what has the offense got to, do, got to do with the publications yeah. that he had made? <laughs> That's the That is the issue. <laughs> I don't understand. Maybe you guys... The, you, you, if, if we understand the phrase... You agree with for, that? Do you forgive, agree with that? No, uh -huh. no, no. no. Forgive okay. us our trespasses. Yes. As we, as we forgive. forgive those who trespass okay. against us. Mm. So you see that uh, we have to behave like, like God. Mm. Okay. God is forgiving us our sins. Why are you not able to forgive that your is. brother's sins? Mm. It's as if you understand this, we will be very selfless Christians. Mm. But if we want God to forgive us our sins, and we continually pester people, mm. ostracize people, put them behind bars. Mm. No, what kind of Christians are we? All right. Yeah. Pastor Loas, tell me why for particular offenses, <laughs> when a minister <laughs> commits, yes. he is forever banned from the ministry. Do you agree with that? Well, I don't want to put you on the spot, but, <laughs> but, I, just, <laughs> but, but I, just want, I just want to know uh, your thought on it. The fact is that um, you are forgiven, mm -hmm. but then you're calling. Uh, you have decided to truncate it. Okay. It is not anyone who did it. Okay. For example... You mess up with the women mm -hmm. as a minister. You mess up with the monies, and you are not faithful. Mm -hmm. How would the flock who are following you be faithful? Okay. So it is not that the church is uh, wicked to seeing that they exit someone when they fall. They are not uh, exiting you from being a member. Mm -hmm. You can still be a member and then contribute to the growth and well-being of the church members with all the knowledge and the experiences you have acquired but for that position for the sake of the world not to say that oh okay these are mm. and then to also uh, protect mm. that office that is the reason why because you can't represent god mm. and continue in that all if right. you are not caught and it is not in the limelight mm. fair enough That's that fine. one is uh, you are cheering, so you, you are making the <laughs> angels uh, of Satan cheer up, yeah. <laughs> uh, you in the stadium. But when it comes out, mm. uh, unfortunately, that is exactly the same way that uh, the scripture also prescribed. And All that's right. what the church is practicing. Like a woman goes to fornicate or a gentleman fornicates and then uh, the person is uh, asked to stay and then a man with his God. Yes. After all, he comes back and then life is good. So All right. that's the reason. I, 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 so I, let's pray for our ministers. Your, your, <laughs> yeah, your explanation um, is, is, 
I think is, is, is understandable. And I ask this question because it may be going on in the mind of our viewers um, and some of our youth. Um, the only thing is that David didn't lose his position. <laughs> as, a king, as, a, as a king, as a king, he didn't lose his position. Someone may say but that. Uh, Ellie, Ellie, <laughs> Ellie and his household lost it. Well, well, <laughs> well. Okay, so let's go to um, Tuesday, surviving through worship. Elder Konadu, surviving through worship. What is the yeah. lesson telling us? Uh, it's about Job. Okay. Last week, we went to Job. This mm. week, we've come back to uh, Job. Now, uh, when you look at this story, God was with his children in a meeting, and then Satan came on board. Mm. But I see one funny thing here is, uh, it was God who brought Satan into the you know, system, not to the meeting, mm. but into dialogue with uh, no, Satan. Abad, Abad. Yeah. Job. Uh, have you considered my servant Job? Mm. Uh, why did God do that? Hmm. Satan is somebody who says Satan is sitting somewhere. Mm. And then you invite Satan to come and join your conversation about your servant. Now, when you look at the whole story, drawing has his attention to Job. Yes. Hmm? So the spotlight was now on Job. Yes. So, Satan said, oh, but for God, you, <laughs> it's because of A, B, C. That is why he's behaving like that. But I want us to quickly fast track and then go to what mm -hmm. happened. Okay. In spite of all the trials that uh, Job went through, mm. how did he respond? He didn't shake. He didn't shiver. He was unmoved. Mm. He didn't move away from God. Mm. He was still worshiping God. Okay. And that is what brings about surviving through, through worship. worship. And you see that the pronouncements made by Job, mm -hmm. we should have to take very particular, you know, take very particular, uh, listen. Now I said, uh, naked I came mm. from my mother's womb mm. and naked will I depart. Okay. All right. You are reading from Job chapter 1, verse 21. Yes. Right? 21. yes. Okay. So you see that Job saw that when he was coming into this world, he brought nothing. So we don't have to rely on our no, property. Mm. Whatever we have, we don't have to rely on them. Okay. So Job was relying on God. In spite of all those things that were coming, he had to endure. Then he continued to say that, uh, God was still in control. The Lord gave mm. and he has taken. Mm. So who am I to you know, argue? Okay. Who am I to <clears throat> complain? Now, going back to our lesson, the extreme heat, but Job was in a very serious heat. The heat was very, very high. Mm. I don't know the temperature, but mm. it was very, very high. But in all this, he was able to endure because he was relying on God. And then finally, he concluded by saying that, may the name of the Lord be praised. Mm. Why should you be praising God when you were in crisis? Mm. When you are in a very serious crisis, you continue to praise God. Now, it's a lesson for us. Okay. Uh, when we go through similar situations mm. we don't have to deny god mm. we don't have to complain against god we don't have to say uh, ask questions about why god why me why this if not you then who so mm -hmm. everybody has been given a level of you no know, uh, heat okay heat heat to mm. go through all right and to test your faith mm. and when we're able to come out that is where you actually be seen as a real christian and a real friend of God. So okay. that is how Job went through, and that is how he endured, how he saw the, 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 the situation in which he found himself. Great, Elder. Thank you very much for the wonderful summary. Elder um, Nyanzu, let me go to Pastor Loas, and then I'll come to Elder Nyanzu. Pastor Loas, Job. 
Yes, Job. <laughs> it's quite unfortunate that Job had to be uh, subjected to that. And fortunately, God, who knows everything, saw Satan and realized what Satan had at the back of his mind. So mm. many uh, people uh, and commentators will always say that uh, God caused the trouble first for Job because uh, Satan wouldn't have mentioned it, but God is all knowing. And uh, the angels have got it. Satan also came because he was an angel. Jesus had not come to die, so he also had access to represent our planet Earth because uh, Adam and Eve entrusted the Earth to them. Mm. That's why when Jesus came, he says, if you worship me, I'll give it to you because it's mine. It has been delivered. Uh, I, it has been given to, to me. And so when he was there, God saw that, no, this guy is thinking about Job. So he decided to put in the first card. All right. And said, Job, you are thinking about this man. What do you think about him? Mm. And then he, begin, he began, as Elder has already summarized. So the important thing over here is that Job says that I will worship God. Why? He mentioned three things that are very important that I want. I came here naked mm -hmm. and I will leave back naked. My dear sister, what remember that, mm -hmm. that you came here naked, you will go back naked. Because of litigation, you are killing someone. Mm. Because of just uh, a material thing, you don't want to talk to that person again. Don't forget that you came naked. Take a lesson from this, and it mm. is very, very important. All right. And you return naked. The second one is that the Lord gave. If God has given to us, and he's taken back. Because look at a man who is very rich in the land, mm. who gives to the poor, who does good things. And all of a sudden, everything is gone. All right. Not only everything, but uh, his uh, own body be be begins to uh, Even, begin destroying. Yes. And so, blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the praise. So, in difficult times, praise God. Mm. In good times, praise God. Mm. And it is not that if you are a child of God, all things will be very rosy. perfect and well for you. It mm. is not going to be rosy. Don't forget, the speed ramps will be on the way. When you meet them, focus on God. Don't reject God, but praise Him, worship Him like Job did, and you receive the blessings. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, um, Elder Nyanzu, um, share your thought with us briefly on yeah. this, on this um, lesson. Yes, surviving through worship. Yes. yes um, when I was reading the Bible, of course, the book of Job has been a book that I had read severally oh, because okay. of my own crucible. Mm. But this time when I was reading, I found something interesting that um, four things were used to attack Job mm. and his possessions. Mm -hmm. First, the Serbians, and then the fire of God, the Chaldeans, and then a great wind. Okay. And Job responds in four ways. And all are recorded in verse 20 mm. that Job responded first by tearing his rope, mm -hmm. and then he shaved his head, mm -hmm. Two. and then fell mm -hmm. and worshipped. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> 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 worshipping is something that must be part of us as Christians, that all God demands from us is to worship him. It was the ultimate thing that Job did, right? Exactly. And must be our ultimate. Exactly. So, okay. in everything, let us seek to worship God. Mm. And by doing so, we would find meaning in the difficulties that we are going through. Great, great. What I thought of is that, look, if God could speak with Satan, then I don't know who you can consider as an enemy so much that you cannot speak with a person. You get the point? Yes. Because as of now, or at this point, I mean, Satan, Lucifer, and the angels had rebelled, and God had In cast fact, them. he did not just speak, allowed him into the assembly of his children. Allowed him. <laughs> <laughs> and entertained conversation with him. Yes. His arch enemy. Yes. And this goes to um, affirm the saying that even enemies respect themselves, right? Yes. So I just want to ask you to think about the fact that God even entertain conversation with Satan. Okay, so um, when's, when's this lesson? Surviving through hope. Pastor Lewis. Yes. What's the lesson telling us? All right. Uh, surviving through hope takes us to Paul and the crucibles that he went through. And um, we were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself indeed. 
we felt we had received the sentence of death. Mm. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. And I want to summarize or read uh, some few verses of Paul and the struggles and the challenges he went through as a child of God from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 29. He says, Are they ministers of Christ? Mm -hmm. I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in hmm. perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness, hmm. often in hunger and thirst, and fastings often in cold and nakedness, hmm. besides the other things that come upon me daily. My deep concern for all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is made to stumble? And I do not bend with indignation. Mm. This is a man who loved God. Who is proclaiming the gospel. How could he find himself in all these things? Mm. Sometimes when we become Christians, we expect that the cross will be taken away. And then the glory is given. But the glorious return of Jesus is not yet. So you can't experience that glory here. That everything will be smooth for you. This is Paul, a wonderful man of God. But look at the things he is countering for us. Mm -hmm. He is going through so that we will have an example. So he writes this not because he wants us to sympathize with him. Mm -hmm. But he wants us to know that as a child of God, you will go through crises and challenges. And the lesson says that we should be people who would have compassion. We should be compassionate to people. We should help them. People who are suffering. People who are going through troubles. Don't laugh at them. Don't ridicule them. Don't say because of their sins. As for you, any time that we call for people to come with your troubles to, 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 to receive prayer, mm -hmm. then you are in. Mm -hmm. And then we begin to ridicule them. Don't forget that he has his own crucibles he's going through, just like Paul. And you also have your own. When he comes for help, Try to embrace them. So Paul faced many trials and situations beyond his own understanding. But God, he was so certain, he was hopeful that God would take him through. And indeed, God saved him through all these things. He was sure that the sufferings will help him to trust himself less and to trust God more. Mm -hmm. So when you are going through suffering, remember to trust in God and not in yourself. He felt comforted by God in those trials and he knew that he would help us to comfort others in their tribulations. So whatever troubles you are going through, you mm. are not alone. Right. God is with you in there. He will save you. And you have a brethren, a community, a support system like we studied last week, yes. whom you can rely on to encourage you, motivate you. So have this hope in God that it will not be diminished and it will indeed come Wow. To wow. Thank you so much, Pastor. That's insightful. So God, the lesson tells us that God wants to minister through us to hurting people, right? Yeah. This means that he may first allow us to experience the same sort of hurts. Yeah. Then we will right. offer encouragement, not from theory, but from our own experience of the compassion and comfort of God. And this is a principle that Jesus' life illustrates, okay? So um, that is surviving through hope. Experience Elder, is the best teacher. Experience is the best teacher. Yeah. Can I do um, short comment on it? Yeah. Shortest. Experience is the best teacher. All right. So when you pass through a certain tribulation and you are able to you know, survive, mm. when a friend or a colleague goes through the same thing, you will be in a better position mm. to, you know, <clears throat> Uh, soothe him mm. or you no know, show compassion but if you don't have that experience you can never never know what he or she is going through all right so when you pass through first and you survive you can also help others and leave them out of their you no know, turmoils wonderful Pastor uh, Daniel, you. yes you know sometimes the temptation is that we tend to think 
the Bible characters were some superhuman. They, they were not. <laughs> or, or they lived in a different planet. Yes. But when you have your colleague sharing his or her experience, something he has gone through similar to that of Job, similar to that of Abraham mm. and Isaac and others, mm. then you um, come into understanding that God is still with you and that you would also be successful through right. your troubles. All right. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Let me go to Pastor Lewis again. Because he's a pastor, I want to ask him this question. To what extent do you think a minister or a pastor should enjoy here? Looking at what we read about Paul and what he went through, I can see many ministers, people, those people who call themselves ministers and reverends and prophets, who are enjoying their empire, having their <laughs> empire, and, and enjoying their dynasty here. So, do they want Jesus to come when they're already enjoying? But I want to ask, to what extent? On the other hand, too, um, is it the case that a minister should suffer necessarily, should be subject to hardships? And all the, what, what is your thought on it? Well, um, the minister should not bring upon himself suffering. Okay. But the minister is open to suffering. Okay. Simply because if you are reflecting the image of your maker, mm -hmm. Definitely Satan will attack you. And those are the attacks. Because if you look at the list Paul was mentioning, yes. his own brethren mm -hmm. were inclusive. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. If we are on the same objective, why would you <laughs> subject me into perils? Yes. But they did. He, 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 he mentioned fasting. Not because he was fasting and praying for the church, but because there is no food. There is no food. He has to go hungry because of the poor. Yes. This man was doing a tent ministry, uh, tent making ministry mm -hmm. by providing for him his own self. Yeah, he could have done that to survive well, to live a lawyer for that matter, mm. leaving everything <clears throat> to come and go through this. But nowadays, as you mentioned, I think we are looking for our comfort, thinking Jesus should wait. Let us enjoy life a while, hmm. a little. And so if you are not doing the work as it is supposed to be, then you wouldn't have problem. But on the other hand, we may see it from far that oh, the pastors are riding good cars, they are doing this, but you don't know what that car what goes into it. I am not speaking for others, but since we talk, we discuss in home, I don't yes, want us to go yes, outside. Yes. Uh, Pastor Kusi may be riding a mm -hmm. vehicle that you will see, thinking that, oh, oh, they are chopping our money, they are spending our money. But Some he time may be ago, pa riding uh, pastors were walking. in a loan. <laughs> <laughs> now, with heritage, for example, that yes, has come, yes. many pastors go for loan, mm -hmm. and then they ride in the loan, yeah. and you think that they are enjoying. They are not enjoying. Pastors mm -hmm. are indeed going through a lot. If they are to open up, Mm. to tell you the sufferings they are going through daily mm. from the attacks of the enemy from members mm. and uh, from so many quarters you'll be shocked and surprised All right. but because mostly it is not open that's why we see it to be that the pastors are enjoying that's true that's true so finally extreme heat right mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> that is the title of our lesson for this week and where am i going to it can be anyway, but okay. So <laughs> it, 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 it give it's it to a us. question: <laughs> Why why should the heat be extreme? Why should God permit it to go to the extreme? Okay. And uh, looking at what we've stated so far, mm. we know that one of the purpose is to is to purify us. So okay. until we are purified, then the heat will continue um, being increased. But we are okay. So that's thank you very much. Let me go to other corner. Do yeah, to conclude for the sake uh, of our time. Yeah, first Ella. Peter 1 7 mm -hmm. summarizes mm -hmm. that the genuineness of your faith mm -hmm. being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Though it is tested by fire, exactly. Amen. So at the end of the day. In spite of all what we are going through, mm. there is light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. And that is what God seeks to give us. All right. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Loas, final yes. comment. The extreme heat. Yes. We have to realize that. Uh, let me put this one across. Sometimes when it, somebody is suffering, so I understand what you are going through. Meanwhile, you've not gone through it. Mm. I think it is something we should discourage. Mm. When somebody is going, through, your <coughs> child has never died. Maybe you, you've not even given birth to a child. And then this person loses a son and says, oh, I understand what you're going through. To make you it worse, some even say, are, I know what you're going what through. You going no, through. you don't know. You don't, you don't know. know. Yes. And so let's try to be on the same page. And now. But with the extreme heat, I think the lesson summarizes it for us to say that 
when we go through the extreme heat, it is not God's intention to destroy us, mm. but the sin that is in us. And number two, God is not to make is not subjecting us to go through it to make us miserable. No, never. But rather to make us pure, to purify us. And the final point I want to lay across is that God cares for us through all things. Through all things. Mm. His tender mm. love, his tender care is there to help us to go through. So when you are going through it, just like uh, C.S. Lewis uh, comment as you said, uh, remember not to fight God. Mm. Not to say, God, why are you watching me going through this alone? Why have you allowed my, my, my wife? To go through this suffering. Is that, is that how, how you, you is are? Is that how you really is are? Is that how you really are? All right. That is not how God is. Okay. God is indeed a God who loves and he wants to save us. He wants to purify us. And the things we are going through, let's trust him. He will save us. Amazing. Beloved, what the lesson is giving us is that God will allow us to go through extreme heat. You may be going through yours now. Or maybe it is yet to come. But you need to understand that God has good intentions for you and that he will not forsake you. So this week, I reviewed the lesson with Elder Archibald Kojo Nyanzu from Mespa SDA Church and then Elder Edward Konadu from Glorious Ken SDA Church. Both churches are at Asaman Kese. Um, and then Pastor Loas, gentlemen, thank you very much for your insightful thought that you've shared with us. Um, shall we have a word of prayer with Elder Konadu, briefly, our closing prayer. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us this far. We are going through the crucibles. We are very happy we are going through it with you. Yes. Continue to be with us. Let us pass through our crucible safely and come out successfully so that we can prepare ourselves well for the kingdom. We want to thank you very much for bringing this to a successful end. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Next week is going to be very interesting. Struggling with all energy. Don't miss it. Same time, join us. God bless you. Bye-bye.